Hi, it's Stacy at Tamarack Nature Center from Ramsey County Parks and Rec. So today we have three easy recipes that you can try at home with family or friends and even get some of the kids involved, which we like to do at my house. So the three recipes are easy garden salsa, garden pizzas, and herb spreads for crackers. So before we get into the recipes and cooking, I wanna show you a couple tips that you might not already know about cooking with kids. So number one is you have to think about things to help keep them safe, but also get them excited about cooking. So one is you gotta let them have some buy-in and some choices. So give them some options. Like if we're gonna make salsa, ask them if you wanna uh, help them choose the produce. Let them pick and go to the farmer's market or the produce aisle or when you choose your groceries online. Which color pepper should we use in the salsa? Yellow, red, or green? So let them have some choices. Also do things down at their level. Uh, instead of having to be on a chair turned around at the counter, if you don't have a big counter like I don't at home, bring everything down to the kitchen table so that they can work there. First, before you get started, make sure you everybody washes hands. And if anybody has long hair, make sure you pull it back in a ponytail so you don't end up having people or kids trying to wipe the hairs out of their face and end up getting food in their hair and or hair in your food. Other things are um, some of the tools and the things you use. You're obviously gonna need some cutting boards. Um, one tool that you might not think about are kids scissors. Make sure you can just scrub them down with some soap and water. They're awesome for chopping or nipping off little pieces of herbs and kids love cutting. So little scissors, peelers, fine peelers, they always love and they usually have a good grip, a big grip for kid hands. One thing you might have stashed away the, for the other season for fall, pumpkin knives. They're great safety knives because they're not super sharp on the ends and they have serrated teeth. So they might do pretty well on a tomato and they still feel like they're cutting, but if those kids aren't ready yet for a paring knife that's actually sharp, those are a great thing to help empower them and get, in, get them used to cutting things. Speaking of cutting, um, sometimes as adults or kids, you worry about cutting the ends of your fingers. You can do a couple things. Let's say you have something that's round, that's gonna roll. You don't want it to roll while you're trying to cut it. So cut it in half first, and then give that half to the child or the other person so it's not gonna go anywhere. Another fun tool you might not have seen before are these cool crinkle cutters. And they just make fun shapes and designs. So think about this. If you wanted to get a kid to try a pepper, would it be more fun to eat something like this or something like this. I'd go for the zigzag, make them think of crinkle cut fries. So those are some of the tools that you can use. Um, and then the other piece of holding something, you can have them hold, try teaching them a club hold where you're going to try to hold those tender ends of the fingers and then hold on to the piece really tightly but hide those tips of the fingers so maybe you won't get the ends bumped or nipped by a little knife. So those are some basics. If you've got some others that work for you, let us know and put some comments on our video. So are you ready to get cooking? I am, because all this smells so good. First, we're gonna start off with garden salsa. It's something you can make this time of year by getting fresh produce from a garden, a farmer's market, a food shelf, a grocery store, a co-op. And it starts off with some basics, tomatoes. Tomatoes, peppers if you like having some crunch, some type of onion, I like red onions, but you can also get green onions, yellow onions, you decide. And then the other ingredients are gonna be some fresh cilantro. If you like a little spice, you can get a, a jalapeno, but most kids I'd start mild. And then some lime juice and some garlic salt. If you don't have garlic salt, 
you can use just salt and some garlic powder or fresh garlic. So start out, the base, base recipe starts with a whole bunch of tomatoes. So let's get some tomatoes cut up. Some people are sensitive to uh, the seeds that are a little bit mushy, so you can take those out if you want, but I just chop everything out up and put it in. I would go for little diced pieces. And it's fun too if you have tomatoes that are different colors or tomatillos. And dice them up in little pieces. And you're gonna start off with mostly tomatoes. Like, it's interesting. My daughter does not like eating raw tomatoes at all. But she loves garden salsa and she got introduced to it at summer day camp here at Tamarack and always loves to help out making it and eating it, the best part. So you get your tomatoes going. It can be big chunks or smaller, but I would cut them up by hand. It doesn't really work for me to use a food chopper or food processor because then it turns into kind of a bubbly foam and gets a little too messy for my taste. All right, so we've got some rough cut tomatoes. Next, I'm gonna go for some peppers for a little crunch. My daughter actually loves peppers. Some people don't, some kids don't. If your kids or family don't like green peppers that have a little bit of a stronger flavor, I would go start with those sweet colored bell peppers, the yellow ones, the orange ones, the red ones. Start Start off with those because they have a sweeter flavor. And for some reason, they don't have the belch factor, <laughs> which always gets us. So we've got that, the peppers, let's toss them in. I'm not really going by a certain recipe. I'm just starting out with a lot of tomatoes and a little bit of everything else. Next, we're gonna go for some red onion. Now, if you're real sensitive to smell, um, you can always put on some gloves um, and cut off the root end and the other end. So here we go, here's some little diced onion. Put that in, the purple, the purple onions or red onions make it extra colorful. I like to challenge us to try to put as much color for our rainbow, eat from the rainbow as much as we can. Put in a little bit of this pepper. Anybody here like sweet corn? We do. And we like adding, sometimes if we had it, have it, a little bit of sweet corn in too to make it into cowgirl or cowboy caviar. Okay, so we've got some peppers, we've got our red onion, we've got tomatoes. Now, some cilantro, makes it nice and fresh. I love to use kitchen scissors or kid scissors. You can use just the leaves or use the whole stem. Fold it over after it's clean and start snipping. It's a little bit of a unique taste. Some people say it tastes like soap. <laughs> so start, I would say less is better. Less is more starting out with fresh herbs because they have a very, a lot of fragrance and a lot of taste. But I like cilantro so I'm putting in a bunch. So we've got the cilantro, and now we need a little seasoning. So I'm gonna go for some lime juice. You can use lemon juice, fresh or bottled. A Little bit of lime juice there, and I'm gonna go for some garlic salt. One trick we do at home so we don't get too much. If I shake like this, I'm gonna probably have too much salt. I like to shake it either into a cap or into a hand and then shake it in. Because if I accidentally, any of us, me or my daughter, put in too much, you can always take it out before you add it. So I've got garlic salt, lime juice. <gasps> I need a spoon. So I'll get a spoon out, mix this up, and then we need some sampling. I'm gonna use this as a spoon. Cause mix the flavors together. If you wanna kick it up a notch and add some protein, and people in your family group or friend group like beans, you can add some black beans 
and really make it into caviar. Now, I've got this beautiful, fresh salsa. I'm ready to try it. Any corn chips will do, but these scoop shape ones or the corn chips that are kind of oval long, they hold a lot. So let's give it a try. See how it smells? I encourage everybody to, to take a sniff of what you made. Dig some of it up here. Mmm. Tastes like it's fresh out of the garden. So fresh, simple, easy garden salsa you can make with your friends and family. Get ready for another recipe. Hi, Shannon here. We have a few more recipes for you. We are going to make bagel pizzas and a variety of spreads. So we're gonna start with the pizza. Uh, bagel pizzas are great. You don't have to use a bagel. You can use um, a pita, an English muffin, or tortilla. I'm gonna use some naan today. I made myself some naan since I'm gluten-free. Made that, it's flour and yogurt and baking soda. Goes together really quick, fried in a pan, it's yummy. So we have garden pizzas here. It's all veggies today. Uh, what we are using today is a banana pepper, some basil. I've got two kinds of tomatoes here. We have these lovely yellow tomatoes growing in our garden, the regular red ones, some red onion. And one thing I really like to put on my pizza is spinach. This is not spinach because we don't have any spinach in our garden right now. I'm not sure why we're not growing spinach, but we are growing kale. So I thought I'd try some kale on my pizza because it's kind of like spinach and I really love spinach on my pizza. So that's what we're gonna do. First, we need some sauce. We're just using regular pizza sauce today, nothing fancy. You go out and get whatever your favorite pizza sauce is or um, spaghetti sauce, and you can use that. Spread it however much you like. I kind of like light sauce on mine. I don't like to put too much on there. And then um, you don't have to use what you were using. Let your kids choose. Take them to the produce section at the grocery store or the farmer's market. Let them decide they're more likely to eat something that they pick. Or you can grow it in your yard or on your patio if you have a deck or something. Um, I can't grow anything in my yard because of the deer and the woodchucks and everything. I grow it all on my patio. So um, just whatever you can grow. If they help grow it, they'll eat it, almost guaranteed. So a little bit of onion, a little bit of basil some pepper. You can put as much or as little as you want on there. Spread it out however. I'm going to put both kinds of tomatoes. The tomatoes come in so many different colors. Green stripey ones, yellow ones, red ones, red stripey ones. I don't like there's so many different colors of tomatoes. It's amazing. And my little bit of kale here because kale is so good for you. And then uh, kind of make sure you have it flattened out a little bit because you want to be able to pile on as much cheese as possible. Unless uh, you're one of those poor people who can't eat cheese, you don't have to put cheese on it. Or you can use soy cheese or whatever kind of cheese that you like that you can eat. Um, just put it on there. I like lots of cheese. And so we gotta get that piled high. Um, if cheese crumbles are too messy for you, if you don't want to deal with that, because you can see I'm making a big mess, uh, you can get sliced cheese and put a slice of cheese on top of there too. Um, this is regular mozzarella pizza cheese, but you can use whatever, whatever kind of cheese you like sometimes because, oh, we also have some feta. If you want to be fancy, gourmet pizzas, feta cheese. There we go. Plenty of cheese. Messy, messy cheese. All right. We are going to put ours in a toaster oven. We have a little toaster oven. Um, works in the regular oven or maybe even on the grill. If you have a grill, you can go ahead and fire that up. Then it won't heat up your kitchen. OK, we're going to let that melt while I show you some of these spreads. Um, we call them spreads. They can also be used as dips. There are a lot of yummy things that you can put into a dip or a spread to use in a lot of different ways. Uh, so we have here today, I have some cream cheese, 
some butter and some sour cream. Now, one of the favorite things of our day campers in summer day camp, especially the preschool day campers, is chive dip. So I have here chives from the garden. We've chopped them up into teeny tiny pieces. Kids can do that pretty well uh, with the little knives and things that Stacy showed you. But you just chop up your chives into little bitty pieces, sprinkle them into your cream cheese, give it a stir, and it's so good on crackers, pretzels, uh, put it on top of a baked potato or into your mashed potatoes. That's really good too. You can spread it on a sandwich. I like to eat it with a spoon, you know, it's whatever. So there we go. Some yummy, yummy chive dip in your cream cheese. I have also here a radish. Um, how do I make dip out of a radish? Well, I'm gonna put it in the butter. Radish butter is a little known treat. It's really good. Even if you don't like radishes really too much, you might like radish butter. It, the butter kind of cools the radishes down a little bit and um, makes them not quite so tangy. So even if your kids don't like radishes, they might like radish butter. And then you're thinking, butter. Like, what do you do with the butter? Well, it makes a great sandwich spread. So if you're making sandwiches of any kind, like ham and cheese or whatever, you can put the radish butter on there. Uh, it's good just on toast as a snack um, or on crackers. And just mix those radishes in until they're all, you can, and again, you can use as much or as little as you want. And radishes come in all different shapes and sizes as well. That's a fun thing to grow. You can grow those in a big pot on your deck and you can pick all different, go find some seeds and um, pick them. The cool thing about radishes is even if you don't harvest them all, once they go to seed, you let them flower, they have really pretty flowers. You can eat the seed pods. The seed pods are really good. So we've got radish butter. And then <clears throat> this last bit too, I've already mixed up this other little treat, this sour cream. I used some sage and some dill, two of my favorite herbs, and put it into the sour cream that is good on pretzels, baked potatoes, or again, mix it into your mashed potatoes, and it's really, really good, easy thing to dip or to put on to something. So three really easy herb dips. All these things are very easy to grow in a container or in your garden. You can find them all at the grocery store or the farmer's market, and they're really great on crackers. I'm gonna try some of this some of my radish butter here on this cracker. Get some on there, kind of stuck to the spoon. Ooh. Wait, not enough radishes. Okay. Mmm, so good. The chive dip will go. Let's see if our pizzas are done yet. Not quite melted. You need to give your pizzas a few minutes to melt. That's the problem with pizza. But um, we'll be back in a minute to see if our pizzas are done, don't go anywhere. All right, so we're back to check on our pizzas and they are looking pretty done back here. So I'm gonna pull them out. Baked them in the oven, little toaster oven. I had it up to 400. Our oven doesn't work so well. You might not need to turn it up to 400. But, so I've got my bagel, I've got my naan. Just gonna cut a little piece off here, see how it came out. Mmm, that looks pretty good. Mmm, fresh basil. Fresh basil is so good on pizza, it makes it taste like pesto. So if you like pesto, definitely get the fresh basil on your pizza. So there you have a few easy recipes that you can make with your kids. Pizza on whatever kind of bread you want and some dips for dipping your crackers, your pretzels, putting on your baked potatoes and other things. Do whatever you want with those spreads. You don't have to add what I added. You can add whatever you want. Let the kids choose. They will eat when they have control. I hope you have fun trying some new recipes. See you later.